This is going to be a very detailed guide on how to perform various repairs on your Nintendo Switch, such as replacing the charging rails, cleaning the fan, replacing the fan, replacing the headphone jack, replacing the SD card slot, replacing the battery, and replacing the thermal paste. I'll be doing this on the original model HAC001. I'll be making a separate video for the OLED model. Be warned that anytime you attempt to work on an electronic device, there is an element of risk. You may break something. I'm going to be as detailed as I can to make sure that doesn't occur, but I won't be able to reduce that risk to zero, so just keep that in mind. First, you'll want to turn off your Nintendo Switch, remove any game that's in the cartridge slot, remove any SD card that's in the SD card slot, remove the Joy-Cons, and set the switch face down on a soft surface so that you don't scratch the screen. You will need to have a tri-wing screwdriver, preferably size 0. You will also need a Phillips size 0000 and 000. There's going to be a lot of different screws in this process, so I suggest you get some type of screw organization into place before you even attempt to do this. So what we're going to do first is take the back off and a few other components, and from there I'm going to pivot to different types of repairs. The thing about the screws on this switch is that they are tiny and they are fragile, and they're easy to strip. It's imperative that they turn immediately as soon as you stick the screwdriver into them and start rotating. To facilitate that, make sure there's no debris around the screw, and if there is, just clean it out. A little bit of alcohol helps. You can also tap on the screw, and that could loosen up any dirt that's underneath it. The first four screws to remove are on the corners of the back, and those will require your tri-wing. These are the only four tri-wings you'll have to worry about today. Next, remove these two from the bottom, and those will take a size 0000 Phillips. And then there's this one screw on the top, that's also a 0000. Then there's another Phillips screw underneath the kickstand. You'll notice a lot of screws on the side. For now, just take out the middle one on each side. You might be able to turn this with the same 0000 size, but I found it better to go one more size up, so that's three zeros. Unless I say otherwise, the screwdriver you'll need from this point forward will be a size 0000. So now the back will come right off. You might have to pry up on one edge of it, but once it's loose, it comes off rather easily. You may want to take a moment to clean the inside of the back plate here. If all you want to do today is clean the fan, this is a good time to actually do it. This is pretty much all the access you need so you can just blow down into the fins and clean it out. The other thing you can do at this point is remove the SD card slot. It's held on by one screw. You may think that this ribbon cable to the left of it is attached to it, but it's not. But it does have a cable that's underneath this black thing right here. It's clamped onto the board. Even if you're not replacing this part, you still need to remove it so that we can get to everything else. So after you remove that screw, pull it straight up and it'll snap off the board right there. And if you have a replacement for it, the new connector snaps into the connector right here and the piece will just snap back into place. And of course put the screw back in. I need to continue going deeper for the other types of things I want to show you, but just so you know, near the end of the video, I'm going to show how to put everything back together again, should you need that information. The next step is to remove all of these screws indicated here, and also make sure you removed that SD slot and its screw that's at the bottom left, and now you can lift up on the metal and pull it out. You'll notice a big glob of thermal paste on this shell, so just keep that in mind as you set it down. But you may also want to poke it 
a little bit to see if it's solidified. And if it is solidified, you may want to replace it. I'm gonna talk more about the thermal paste coming up. This is not the only spot that has it. Next, I'm going to show you how to take out the battery in case you wanna replace it, but you may also wanna take it out if you're doing repairs on other parts of the switch, just as a safety precaution. You don't want any energy going through the parts that you're touching. First, you wanna disconnect it. The connector is right here. You have to pull up on the white part toward the ceiling and it'll just snap out of place. The battery itself has some adhesive on the back of it and it's stuck down into this tray. So what you have to do is carefully pry it up out of that tray. What I do is heat up the battery a little bit. I'm using a heat gun on a very low setting, but you can also use a hairdryer. Just don't overheat it and don't heat up the other components and melt them. And then once it's warm, go ahead and start prying the battery. I suggest you use plastic. You do not want to puncture the battery with something metal or with anything for that matter. I had to do one corner and then another corner and another corner because it's stuck on there pretty good. And here's what the adhesive looks like on the back. So that's how you remove the battery. Once again, I show how to reassemble everything later on in the video. Next, I'm going to show you how to remove the fan. In order to do that, I have to show you how to remove the cartridge slot and the headphone jack. So I'm kind of showing you how to remove three things all at once here, but that's just the way this thing is built. First, you have to remove this heat sink and it's mostly held down by these three screws down here. So remove those. There's some foam tape that's very sticky and it's kind of halfway on the fan and halfway on the heat sink. I'm gonna pry that up a little bit then you want to pull on the bottom of the heat sink down here. There's some metal fins at the top that kind of attach to the top of the fan there, but they're not screwed down or anything. Now here you see some thermal paste. Right now I'm still talking you through how to remove the fan. I'll come back to the thermal paste in a little bit. To get this fan out, there are three screws, but you only see two of them. There is a piece over here to the left that needs to be removed to reveal the third screw. That piece is the board that has a cartridge slot on it, and it also has the headphone jack. So if either one of those two things breaks on you, you can just get a new board. So anyway, I'm going to remove that piece and we'll start off by removing these two screws here. They hold down this plastic thing, so don't lose that. Then there is a tiny connecting board right here that you need to pry straight up, just like you did with the SD slot. And then there's a ribbon here. There is a gate on it that needs to be flipped up. And it's actually pretty easy to flip up. And once you flipped it up, you don't really need to take the ribbon out of it. Once you pull the whole piece up, the ribbon will just slide right out of it like this. And there you go, there's the replacement part if you need to do the, the headphone jack or the cartridge slot. But let's get back to removing the fan. There is a tiny power cable that goes to it and it's right here and it has a gate on it and you wanna swing that gate up and then pull that ribbon out. And then there are three screws on it and what I like to do is just loosen up all three of them and pull the thing straight out with the screw still in it. Because there's these little rubber washers underneath the screws, if you take the screws completely out, those washers may fall onto the carpet or something. So there's the fan, if you wish to replace it, that's how you do it. Under the fan is another connector and that leads to the power button assembly and the volume button that's in the top right right here. That's not a repair I told you I was going to cover in this video, but if you wish to go on with it, there's the ribbon connector. I had to set some limits to this tutorial. I didn't want to do a complete disassembly. If you're watching this because you want to replace the rails that you stick the Joy-Cons into, what you need to do is take out the remaining screws on the rail that you wish to remove. These are easy to strip, 
so just keep that in mind and also keep in mind that each rail has a tiny ribbon cable you need to flip the gate upward just like on the other connectors and then pull the ribbon out carefully i'm just going to do the rail that's on the right right now you can then slip that ribbon through the board like this and there you go there's the rail that can be replaced it's also the component that charges the joy con so if your joy con is not charging replacing this could be the solution I do have a whole other video that talks about solutions to Joy-Cons that do not charge if that's your main issue. The other one has a complex curl in its ribbon cable, but it's connected the same exact way if you wish to remove that one. At this point, you can also remove the speakers. They are connected with a connector right here, and the speakers are just sitting in these trays right here. So the last thing I'm going to cover is putting on new thermal paste. And then after that, I'll show how to put everything back together again. You do not necessarily have to replace the paste just because you went inside the switch. If it's still liquidy, just go ahead and leave it there. But if you do want to go through with it, go ahead and remove the existing paste. And you can use paper towels, alcohol, and Q-tips to do that. And then just put a new glob on top of it. I squeezed the tube a little bit too hard and put a little bit too much on it. A normal thermal paste that you would use on your computer will do. I'm using MX4. You can then put the heat sink back on like this. You'll have to push down right above the fan part and then right above where you put the paste, do a little bit of a swirling motion with the bottom end and that'll help spread the paste. Now you'll need to put those three screws back in. There's also another glop of thermal paste that would have went right on top of this and it's also on the metal shielding so clean that off and a lot of people recommend that you put a thicker thermal paste on this part because it needs to fill a bigger gap but I'm going to go ahead and stick with my MX4 because I still have a lot of it left and I want to use it up so I'm going to stick some on there I'm not going to put any on the shielding itself it's going to spread onto that when we put the shielding back on So for the rest of this video, I'm just going to talk about how to put everything back together. To get the rails back on, you first want to plug the ribbon cable back in. And getting it into that tiny connector is kind of a pain. I have no good way of describing it. You just have to hold it flat and scoot it in. And then shut the gate on it. And then screw the railings back in. Do every screw except for the middle one at this point. To put the fan back in, just set it down and put the three screws back into it and connect that connector again. Remember it has the gate on it. The cartridge slot piece can go back on now. And to do that, you set it down into place and then push down on this part right here. If you do it just right, you'll feel it snap right into the board. There's no doubt about it once it happens. There's a definite snap to it. Then put in this one screw that was holding it down. Then put this plastic piece back on and put the screws back into it. And then put this ribbon cable back into place and shut the gate on it. Put the battery back into place. It's pretty self-explanatory. The connector just pushes straight down and snaps right into place. Put the metal shield back into place. Put the SD slot back in its spot. Once again, you'll want to push down on the connector and you'll feel it snap right into place when you got it situated correctly. And then put the screw for that back in. Go ahead and put these screws back in. Put the back back on and use your tri-wing screwdriver to put these four screws back into place. And then the one that's under the kickstand. Screw in the two that are on the bottom and the one that's on the top. And then put in the final screw on each side. Thank you for watching this video. FYI, I also did a teardown of the dock itself. If you're interested in that, there's a link to it on the screen in front of you. Thank you for watching the video. Have a great day.